A lot of investors are missing the big picture when it comes to electric vehicles. Ford expects 40 to 50% of its global vehicle volume to be electric by 2030. Same with BMW, and GM plans to go fully electric by 2035. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with these plans is simple. Thanks to advances in battery technologies, industrial robotics, and automotive engineering, electric vehicles will be cheaper and better performing than gas-powered cars years before these legacy automakers will make this shift. In fact, by 2025, electric vehicles could be undercutting gas-powered ones by more than 20% in terms of costs while beating them in terms of performance. That means if you're running on gas, you're running out of time. In this episode, I'll highlight some of the latest investing research on electric vehicles and show you which auto companies could win the market over the next decade, including a company held by both Kathy Wood and Warren Buffett. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it, starting with a supercut of ARK Invest's latest research on electric vehicles, as presented during their 2022 Big Ideas Summit. But today, the big idea is electric vehicles, and currently the two biggest uh, bottlenecks, really, for people purchasing an EV are, you know, the upfront price being too high, and people have a lot of range anxiety. Uh, but looking at the technology, we're seeing that costs are coming down. And we're seeing that ranges are going up and charging times are also decreasing. We're forecasting that there will be 40 million electric vehicles sold in 2026. That's up from 4.8 million electric vehicles sold in 2021. Uh, that comes out to about a 53% annual growth rate, which is very impressive. Uh, and really the biggest risk to this is whether or not traditional automakers can successfully transition from gas powered vehicles to autonomous electric vehicles. Wright's law is that for every cumulative doubling in production, you get a fixed percent cost decline. That's what we're seeing here on the chart on the left. And that fixed percent cost decline for lithium ion batteries is 28%. The reason we're choosing the battery is because it's the single largest cost component of the electric vehicle. So it typically makes up roughly 20 to 25% of the total cost of the vehicle. So by looking at the cost decline for that component, you can get a pretty good sense for the total cost to produce the vehicle. How we've extended our research relative to last year is by looking at lithium iron phosphate cells. Nickel cells are more energy dense, so you should have a longer range, but they're more expensive. But with the lithium iron phosphate cell, you get a much cheaper battery cost and it's at a lower production base. And so what we think is going to happen is that you're going to have somewhat of a split in automakers who have the efficiency, uh, whereas you'll have people who are laggards in the industry who will still be using that more expensive cell to, to achieve the same level of range. And all of this is driving to that tipping point that we're talking about. And when electric vehicles could hit price parity with gas powered cars. And we think that this is, could occur in 2023. Most people think, you know, price parity is this end point. The battery costs will come down and then they'll stay level with gas powered cars. That's not what happens. Uh, the cost decline should continue. And so you can see that in 2025, we think that it's gonna be, you know, 25 to 35% cheaper to produce an electric vehicle relative to the gas powered counterpart. So we were just talking about, you know, vehicle price and costs, which is one barrier to entry for consumers. And the other is range anxiety. Uh, and what we see here is that Wright's law also models improvements in electric vehicle charging rates. And so the ability to charge an EV quickly is impacted not just by the vehicle and the power electronics there, but by the charging infrastructure. A lot of money is being invested in improving this metric. EV performance is improving. You just saw that with charging rates. Uh, the median performance of electric vehicles in 2021 is approaching Tesla's performance in 2018. Uh, you can see the way that we're defining this index is looking at charging rate divided by vehicle cost. Uh, and we think there will be a roughly eightfold increase in performance of electric vehicles uh, over the next five years. It could be faster charging. It could be a cheaper vehicle. You know, we believe that autonomous could take shape in that time frame. So with all of these improvements, we're seeing electric vehicles continue to take share from gas powered vehicles. 
Uh, and it's pretty remarkable in 2021, EV sales soared. They were up 112% year over year, while gas powered sales uh, were estimated to be up just 1.7% off of you know very uh, depressed levels from COVID. And what we're seeing is that electric vehicles are breaking traditional S-curve dynamics. So in this chart on the left, you're seeing that traditional S-curve, and you see even in the very early years with high growth rate, there's a declining year-over-year -year growth rate every year. So it goes 140, 138, 135. And with electric vehicle sales, they've gone from 60% in 2013, and now they're at 112% in 2021. And the reason for that is that we're seeing uh, layered S-curves on top of each other. Uh, one of the last things I'll leave for you here is that an interesting dynamic that we're seeing is the emergence of neighborhood electric vehicles. And so these are vehicles that aren't designed to go on the highway. Uh, they're extraordinarily inexpensive uh, and they're ramping extremely quickly. And we think that these will continue to take off and could be a significant part of those 40 million units. So let's break down a few of the biggest points in that supercut. The biggest barriers to widespread EV adoption have been sticker price and range anxiety. Let's talk about sticker price first. In 2020, Sandy Monroe showed a really interesting breakdown between the costs to make EVs and internal combustion vehicles. It turns out that a whopping 51% of electric vehicle costs come from their powertrain, which includes the battery packs, power connectors and inverters, the cooling system, and so on. If we combine that with what Sam Cora said, about half of that 51% of the cost comes from the battery pack itself. So one thing electric vehicle investors should be looking out for is how companies are innovating to lower their powertrain costs in general and their battery pack costs specifically. Let me give you a clear example to really connect the dots here. Tesla is moving away from battery packs and towards using batteries as part of the car's structure. Kind of like how modern aircraft wings aren't really just wings, but wing-shaped fuel tanks. Fuel literally fills the entire wing of a plane, maximizing the amount of fuel it can hold and minimizing the amount of metal that's doing nothing but adding weight. That's what Tesla plans on doing with the bottom of the vehicle by making a structural battery pack. Also, current car bodies are made up of hundreds of individual parts, which are made from many different materials and have to be joined together in several different ways, by welding, bolting, or adhesives. Tesla is going to use two giant castings for the front and rear underbody sections and then connect them with the structural battery pack. The final result of building the car using these Giga castings connected by a structural battery pack is that Teslas would be up to 10% lighter and gain 14% increased range. Just to be clear, 14% on a 300 mile range is an extra 42 miles per charge. This idea of battery cell to vehicle integration is such a huge differentiator that it actually got its own slide in ARK Invest's 2021 Big Ideas report because the impact of this design choice is enabling many longer range vehicles at much lower price points. If Tesla's competitors don't start doing this as well, they'll need to find a different way to close that 14% range gap. This year, ARK Invest has created an EV platform performance index to compare EVs over time. This performance index divides the vehicle charging rate by its cost. At first, I didn't really understand this metric, so I had to do a little digging. Long story short, there are a few reasons that this metric actually checks out. First, if you can quickly charge a battery safely, then you can also quickly discharge that same battery safely, meaning that energy can be spent on performance, like accelerating quickly or towing more mass. Second, because the charging rate is in units of miles per minute, the efficiency of the car outside the battery and powertrain are included in the metric. This is why Elon Musk is so hyper-focused on Tesla's drag coefficient. He's technically upping the miles per charge in a way that doesn't have anything to do with the powertrain directly. Third, the denominator of this EV platform performance index is the vehicle's cost. So the final performance per dollar is what matters most, not just performance itself. So this really is a pretty elegant system level metric for making apples to apples comparisons between electric vehicles. This comparison is actually where things start to get really interesting. As Sam Cora said, the median electric vehicle today is approaching the Tesla Model 3's performance from back in 2018. That's a three year performance gap. In last year's Big Ideas report, ARK Invest compared the Model 3 to a lot of the mainstay electric vehicles out there, like the Audi e-tron, the Mustang Mach-E, the Nissan Leaf, 
and the Chevy Bolt. Tesla had the best combination of efficiency and performance by a pretty large margin. For example, the Model 3 was just a little slower from 0 to 60 than the Mustang Mach-E, but it got almost twice as much range per kilowatt hour. On the flip side, the Model 3 was just a little less efficient than the Hyundai Ioniq, but it was almost three times faster getting from 0 to 60. That's an insane difference. Going back to this year's EV performance slide, Tesla's four models are scoring much higher than other EVs from other automakers on this performance index. According to ARK Invest, the price to performance gap between Tesla's and the rest of the industry is only expected to grow as Tesla introduces new battery chemistries, cell designs, and software upgrades that stack up these advantages in their favor. As a result, Tesla cars could offer almost twice as much performance per dollar as cars from other automakers in 2026. Said another way, that's like being able to buy a car from 2030 in the year 2026. That's pretty crazy, right? In my opinion, the average consumer is already starting to feel this performance gap, which is why Tesla was able to sell close to a million cars in 2021, an 87% year-over-year increase despite the chip shortage that disrupted auto production around the world. Tesla is ARK Invest's number one holding for a ton of reasons, and we could spend all day talking about their massive advantages in artificial intelligence, robotics, and energy storage. If that interests you, check out my All Things Tesla playlist. I'll leave it in the top right-hand corner of your screen right now and in the description below as well. Let's take a step back and talk about the rest of the electric vehicle market. EVs have long been known to have lower overall costs of ownership than equivalent gas-powered vehicles. For example, Plug-in America studied the cost of ownership of a 2019 Hyundai Kona EV versus the equivalent gas-powered Kona and found that the electric version was cheaper by a whopping $75 per month. A lot of that difference comes from the price of electricity versus gasoline, as well as the maintenance since electric vehicles have fewer moving parts and thus fewer points of failure. The ongoing growth in the global automobile population is projected to increase from 1 billion vehicles in 2016 to over 2 billion in 2040. Rapid population growth and rising incomes in developing countries like China and India are projected to fuel the increasing supply of EVs on the road. No pun intended. Overall, EV sales for 2021 were up over 100% year over year, while gas-powered sales remained relatively flat and have been shrinking over the last few years, well before the chip shortage and these supply chain issues began. The auto industry as a whole is on track to invest nearly half a trillion dollars in the next five years alone to make the transition to EVs. And my question is, is that going to be enough? Let's start with American-made EVs from Ford and GM. GM has had a ton of amazing coverage about their plans to go fully electric by 2035. And I can remember your dramatic announcement that by 2035, GM would be 100% electric. You changed the whole story, Mary, wherever, wherever you are. There you are. You did, Mary. You electrified the entire automobile industry. I'm serious. You led. And it matters. But right now, their only current electric vehicle is the Chevy Bolt, which is actually pretty fire. No, uh, I mean, it's literally been recalled due to spontaneously combusting batteries. Leave it to GM to switch from gas to electric, but keep the combustion. Uh, I'm here till Friday, folks. On the other hand, Ford has really started to ramp up production of the Mustang Mach-E, which sold over 27,000 units in 2021, making it the third best-selling EV after the Tesla Model Y and the Tesla Model 3, each of which sold over five times more than the Mustang. Tesla has really opened up an insane sales gap. Besides Tesla, there are a few other EV stocks that you should be aware of. Xpeng Motors, ticker symbol XPEV, is a relatively new startup that was founded in 2014. They design, develop, manufacture, and sell EVs in China. Xpeng is geared towards the mid to high-end segment of China's EV market, and currently has two models, an SUV called the G3 and the four-door sports sedan called the P7. Xpeng went public on the New York Stock Exchange in August of 2020 and initially shot up over 250% in its first few months of trading, reaching a market cap of over $55 billion. Since then, the stock has hit some turbulence due to this global chip shortage, and now they're trading at roughly a $32 billion market cap. Kathy Wood started buying the dip on Xpeng in ARKQ in December and has accumulated almost 900,000 shares worth about $32 million today. Xpeng's share price recently dropped by over 30%, and Kathy Wood has been buying the dip, increasing her share count by a similar amount. I'll talk more about Xpeng when I cover autonomous ride hailing in a future episode, since they have some exciting features in their pipeline related to autonomous driving. 
NIO, ticker symbol NIO, is another Chinese EV company that started in 2014. The interesting thing about NIO's vehicles is that they offer the battery as a service. Remember, the battery is about 25% of an EV's total price today. What that means for customers is that they pay way less for the car since it doesn't include the batteries, saving about 128,000 Chinese yuan or about $20,000. Then they pay about $150 per month for a separate battery subscription. Besides normal battery charging, NIO has about 700 battery swap stations across China, where a battery can be swapped out in as little as five minutes. One of the direct benefits of this model for consumers is that as battery chemistries and technologies get better, NIO can simply swap out your older battery for a new one. So the depreciation and risks associated with batteries are on NIO, not on the customer. Here's another pretty funny fact. Their vehicles are technically about 20% cheaper without this battery, and you can technically give them a full charge in as little as five minutes because of battery swapping, which is anywhere from four to eight times faster than fully charging a Tesla with a supercharger. That means NEO's vehicles are by far and away the best performing electric vehicles using ARK Invest's EV platform performance index, where they would score anywhere between a 30 and a 60 today, depending on the cost of the model you're looking at and the battery size you choose. This is obviously not an apples to apples comparison because I'm comparing battery swapping to supercharging, but that's technically a viable way to charge a NEO car, right? Anyway, ARK Invest doesn't hold NEO stock today. The last company I want to mention is BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams. Their ticker symbol is BYDDY, and the company is held by both Kathy Wood and Warren Buffett. In late 2008, Buffett made a $232 million investment in BYD, giving him about an 8% stake in the company. Today, that stake is worth over $6 billion, making it one of Buffett's top 10 holdings. That's three times more than his 4% stake in General Motors, which is worth about $2.2 billion. Charlie Munger once called Wang Chan Fu, the CEO of BYD, a combination of Thomas Edison in solving technical problems and Jack Welch in terms of getting done what he needs to do. Today, we can see why. BYD sold almost 600,000 plug-in vehicles in 2021. 320,000 of those were battery electric vehicles, while 270,000 were plug-in hybrids. And they expect to double that volume in 2022. Beyond plug-in vehicles, BYD sells a wide array of products, including buses, solar panels, and battery packs, so they're pretty well diversified in terms of energy and transport. ARK Invest currently holds just over 300,000 shares of BYD, or about $16 million in ARKQ. Their fund themed around autonomous technology, robotics, and energy storage, which makes BYD a pretty small position for ARK Invest overall. So, comment below or tweet me at ticker symbol U with your thoughts on electric vehicles and the companies building them today. Are you surprised at just how far ahead Tesla is versus other US automakers? Do one of these other EV companies strike you as more interesting than the others? I'm excited to hear your thoughts. As for me, I'll definitely be diving into BYD in a future episode because I'm always interested in stocks that are held by both Kathy Wood and Warren Buffett. I'll also make sure to talk about Tesla and Xpeng again when I cover autonomous ride hailing, which is another multi-trillion dollar market opportunity identified by ARK Invest in their 2022 Big Ideas report. So if you want to know when I drop new market research around electric vehicles and autonomous mobility, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the channel with all notifications turned on. That's a great way to invest in the channel that invests in you. And if you're looking for quicker insights every day, I'm also posting new content to Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. Yes, even TikTok. So go follow ticker symbol U on whichever channels you already enjoy surfing. Speaking of investing, high tech growth stocks like these have been incredibly volatile lately. So if you want to learn more about this area of the stock market, check out this episode right here. If you want to learn more about ARK Invest's big ideas and market research, this episode is a great place to start. Either way, stay long, stay strong, and thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.